Uh, welcome back. This is Andrew Smith, uh, instructor of American literature here at Tennessee Tech University. And this is a talk on Kenneth Patchen and the picture poem. And I am recording this uh, for them to understand what picture poems are, but also to uh, put picture poems out there to the world because I, in all of the YouTube videos uh, to the great Kenneth Patchen, mostly there are uploads of his recording. Uh, Kenneth Patchen was one of those people who really popularized poetry with jazz, which was very popular among the Beat Generation writers, where they would get uh, a band. And then co that continues all through the uh, punk and hippie eras as well. And even to this day, performance poetry with music accompaniment is, uh, is a big deal. Uh, Joy Harjo, who we studied recently in this course, uh, has really several albums. She herself is a musician, but she will also sort of speak slash rap her, um, her poetry over a musical accompaniment. I'm teaching creative writing this semester, the 3000 level intro to creative, and we're doing uh, poetry right now, and the students are investigating writers. One of the class members uh, went and found a performance poet who's mainly known as a lyricist of a punk band, and basically it's, it's punk rock with performance poetry uh, for lyrics. So Patchen was a pioneer in this ear area. Um, Patchen is not considered to be a member of the beat movement, but rather a predecessor of the beat movement, and the, and the reasons are, are multifold. Uh, but one, he was older. So uh, along with a very famous kind of kind of grandpa of the Beats named Kenneth Rexroth, the other Ken, Kenneth Patchen, was uh, more, you know, between the wars. Uh, the Beats are mostly a post-World War II movement. Patchen was known as kind of uh, coming into notoriety during the Depression and between the wars. So he's just a little bit older, though. He did live um, well into, I think, around to around 1970-something, and he was extremely po prolific. He was partnered with a small press called New Directions. Uh, he was a pacifist. He was spiritual but not religious. He was an artist. He was a rebel poet. He was a poet who, who believed, like the Romantic poets, that poetry is your whole life. Uh, now you all have come in, come to age in postmodernism or post postmodernism, and we have this desire, I think, sometimes to separate the art from the artist. And as we're living, you know, with you know, hashtag me too in accountability culture, you could see why somebody would want to be separating the person from their art because people are being asked to, to not do mean things, you know. Um, but but Patchen, his whole life was a poem. He believed in, in life. He was very uh, huge appetite for, for living, uh, very romantic, uh, married Miriam Patchen, uh, and they fell madly in love and they stayed together uh, their whole life. Um, some of the poems, as you'll see, uh, in, in today's talk will be strongly linked to the peace movement. Uh, and I actually had the chance, uh, Patchen had passed away, but I had the chance to meet his widow, Miriam Patchen, at a peace rally in the 1980s um, out in uh, Nevada, where in the desert at the time they were blowing up uh, nuclear weapons uh, in the earth. Now, underground weapons testing ceased. Uh, I believe it was during the Bill Clinton years, and we are no longer doing that. And nuclear weapons are... Uh, in many countries now considered to be illegal, and there is even talk among the United States and the other nuclear powers to uh, to disarm and to de-escalate, to maybe one day finally live in that uh, nuclear-free world where the picture poems you'll see in this lecture today, some of them were were put forth to that cause uh, for a world uh, free of, of nuclear war and nuclear weapons. Um, uh, P Patchen was uh, injured uh, and had a very se serious back injury. And men, much of his life, he was uh, an invalid or partially an invalid. He lived in, in, at home. He was in bed a lot, had a lot of chronic pain issues. And the picture poems came out of a burst of creativity when he was mostly uh, in the bed and he had these just, you know, creative visions. And so they made like an easel workspace and he would paint this very primitive art. And see, this is art that doesn't require um, a formal training. It's a, it, it's a burst of vision and creativity, as you'll see in a moment. And his words really speak to, uh, to for themselves. But the style are, are sayings. Um, growing up, you know, in antiquity, there was a, a, a group of Christian monks in the, you know, the period after Constantine uh, converted Christianity and the Roman Empire became Christian around the 300s and the 400s. These were, were monks that went back to the desert, you know, kind of you know, trying to get back, trying to get Christianity back to its roots, you know, in the, in the 300s, trying to get back to the zeros, I guess. And uh, uh, the desert parents would make these little sayings, and they were almost like uh, Zen Buddhist sayings. Uh, but today in the day of Instagram and Twitter and short 
kind of um, things and these little memes that people make. I think these picture poems are really the first memes, the first kind of uh, viral visual messages. And I think Patchen's gift to say it short and to say it beautiful is incredible. And and some of the the picture poems aren't pretty. I mean, they're it's folk art. Uh, there's a there's an element of the surrealistic and of the grotesque in Pat, P- Patchen's picture poems, but they're all arresting. They're all startling. They're all inspiring. Um, a, a girl gave me this book when I was in high school, and I was instantly mesmerized. And years ago, when I taught Patchen in the same course, um, a couple of students at Tech became just completely blown away, and they joined me in my passionate obsession. So that's the picture of him as a fairly young poet. And it says, every man is me. I am his brother. No man is my enemy. I am every man and he is in and of me. This is my faith, my strength, my deepest hope and only belief. And so we're going to be seeing um, uh, picture poems from a book called What Shall We Do Without Us, which are the full color picture poems. Several of these were published also in black and white, and they're good no matter what genre, uh, what platform, I should say, but they really look good in color. All at once is what eternity is. All at once is what eternity is. The page numbers on the on these slides actually refer to uh, one of the reprints of the uh, picture poems by New Directions Books, uh, his lifelong publisher. And it's a beautiful edition, but they are in black and white. I recommend going back to uh, the original version. You'd have to buy a used copy uh, off of one of the used vendors online. What shall we do without us? All at once is what eternity is. Caring is the only daring, only, oh, you know it. Uh, One of the predecessors to Patchen is William Blake, who wrote the Illuminated Manuscripts, and he wrote visionary uh, poetry that was linked to spirituality, Christianity, and social justice in in England. And and he was like, you know, 18th century, 19th century, uh, Blake was. And there is a connection between uh, Blake and Patchen, but uh, Blake's manuscripts would be more intense and there'd be more words. They would tell a story. They'd be more narrative like you would expect from a story poem. And with, um, and sometimes they'd be book long illuminated manuscripts. With Patchen, the picture poem was done on like a canvas and it's a self-contained thing. It's a self-contained thing. Now, sadly, I used to have a classroom in New Hall North where we, we covered the walls with these. Um, I no longer get to use that classroom. I think some of the picture painting poems used to be up there, but it was formerly when you were sitting in this class, you would be surrounded by other versions that your predecessors had done um, of these picture poems. I, I'll try to see if I can get some pictures of examples to show you of, of prior student work um, at a future time. Uh, Caring is the only daring, oh, you know it. All things are all things, true? And if not, how not then, my little two-legged flea? Name me one single thing that is not all things, eh? All things are all things. The argument of innocence can only be lost if it is won. The argument of innocence can only be lost if it is won. Now, we could ponder this one for days. I'm teaching argument in writing class with freshmen right now. And of course, they want to win their arguments. They want to convince their readers that they are right. But innocence can only be lost if it is won. Innocence is before the battle, when battles weren't necessary, (laughs) when we were naked, naked vegetarians in the Garden of Eden, right? The best hope is that one of these days the ground will get disgusted enough to just walk away, leaving people with nothing more to stand on than what they already have so bloody well stood for up to now. So these creatures are magical and weird and disturbing and fun. And he has this joyfulness, but he also has this criticism against uh, hypocrisy that he sees in the world, his world, the, the world uh, between the wars and after the second war as well. So he, he continued to work. I think most of these actually 
uh, picture poems were were after the after the Second War. So he lived through both of the World Wars and and, and spoke about that. The world is nothing that can be known. In the shadow, we shall see the color of God's eyes again. Beyond love, there is no belief. Beyond love, there is no belief. Should have had this ready, but he was just a boy during World War II, during World War One. Just a boy. His dates are 1911 to 1972, 1911 to 1972. Beyond love, there is no belief. The continuous Christ, dying, rising, O seasons of earth, sky, sea, and air. In one touching hearing, the seeing of the sun, and these mistaken and pathetic imaginings, man, bird, fish, beast, flower, stone, lake, tree, oh, this forever learning animal, arriving always where, all reason denies it standing back and forth and yet again, into the unmoving eternity's single clock, Nothing, everythingness, life, death, oh, hallucinatory mask. The continuous Christ. Nothing, everythingness. I have a funny feeling that some very peculiar looking creatures. Are out there watching us. I have a funny feeling that some very peculiar looking creatures out there are watching us. This could be your Valentine. It is Valentine's week and I hope you have planned well if you are in a relationship for your sweetheart. Imagine seeing you here. After all, it's not every day that the two nicest people in the big old lousy world get together like this. Imagine seeing you here. It's not every day that the two nicest people in the big old lousy world get together like this. I know people are exhausted with politics, uh, but at the same time, uh, here's the reason why you're exhausted with politics. Man, would you look at your leaders, a puckering up like they expected God to kiss them right smack on the mouth any minute now. Guess all those crude and unenlightened people must have tortured and starved and murdered themselves just for the hell of it. Man, would you look at your leaders. And then simple lament, simple lament like in the book of Psalms. Just six words. Just six words, this poem. My God, the sorrow of it. And see, art about America teaches us this, that the world is tragic and the world is beautiful. The world is beautiful, but the world is also tragic. My God, the sorrow of it. I'm sure everyone knows somebody. Everybody has that one special someone in their life they'd like to give this one to. I proclaim this international shut your big, fat, flapping mouth week. And look at that wonderful person with the weird arms and the, and the flowers growing out of his hand and the funny face. I proclaim this international, I proclaim this international shut your big, flapping mouth week. The one who comes to question himself is cared for mankind. Uh, uh, past, Patchen uses a uh, masculine language. Then it was very typical to, to refer to the universal human as, as him. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't unusual uh, to refer to the universal human as him uh, back in the day, right? So uh, this is a, uh, 
he's referring to all of us, woman and man and all, all, all conscious creatures, right? The one who comes, I'm sorry, the one who comes to question himself has cared for mankind. The theme of that book, uh, the coffee table version, the color version, which you can get a used copy. What shall we do without us? What shall we do without us? What is not then is in every case the world. What is not then is in every case the world. Which of us is not flesh, last and first in that common cause? Which of us is not flesh, last and first in that common cause? Beyond this, I would like to be able to say, to say more. Some folk who are uh, spiritual, and he's mystical in a non-religious way, but some folks who are spiritual and mystical, they think it's all up there in the sky. It's all air. It's all, it's all brain waves. It's up in the clouds. It's disconnected from the body. And some people for whom uh, humanity is, is their blessing and their curse, I guess you could say. For those of us who are trapped in these cloaks of skin, we wrestle with the fact that our feet are on the ground, that gravity, gravity binds us to earth. And we live in, we live in, in these temporary um, meat you know, these temporary uh, meat, meat containers. We're animals, you know, we're animals and gods or neither or both or something like that. Which of us is not flesh? Peace or perish, peace or perish. And to think it all started out like any other world intended one might almost have been led to believe to last for a good long time. Peace or perish. This resembles uh, the words of the great preacher uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. Not violence or nonviolence, but nonviolence or non-existence. Peace or perish. And to think it all started out like any other world intended what might almost have been led to believe to last for a good long time. And on that same theme, peace now for all men. Or amen to all things. Peace now for all men or amen to all things. And look how the pictures, they don't refer to what he's saying, but they don't not belong. The art and the words have become one. And, and students have done these uh, with digital programs, paint, Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever. They've done it, you know, with probably with PowerPoints. Uh, uh, they've written it out with pencil or ink, or they've gone and bought a canvas, or they've done collage. I can't draw well, but I know how to use scissors and glue, and I've done I've done similarly with with collage. The, the picture poems are a very versatile genre. A favorite of a former student of mine. Now, when I get back here, I expect to find all of you marching through the streets with great bunches of wildflowers in your arms. Now, when I get back here, I expect to find all of you marching through the streets with great bunches of wildflowers in your arms. So for this class, the creative midterm option one is to make your own picture poems, to be like Patchen. Patchen is beautiful. Patchen is himself. He doesn't try to be somebody else. He's He's not a copycat. He didn't, he, they had no internet then. He couldn't go on Instagram or Pinterest uh, to get his idea. He came up with it on his own and he had a beautiful time. I had so many creative though assignments. This is, we took an old vinyl uh, record album and painted all over it uh, their sayings and then put it in the old vinyl sleeve. If you go for the cheapo records, you can pick up a used vinyl for 50 cents or a dollar uh, to make into art. So Kenneth Patchen uh, was an eccentric, unique American artist who loved life and everything about it. And he hated, and he hated war and he hated hypocrisy and he made picture poems just because, just because he could. Anyway, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, uh, I'm Andrew Smith, American lit teacher here at Tennessee Tech and a, a picture poet and poet myself. 
uh, and we're going to switch over to uh, just I'll be able to answer any questions you guys have. We might even be able to get out of class uh, a little bit early today. Um, I hope everybody's been inspired by Kenneth Patchett.